First, let me start off by saying my apologies for not getting this Royal Rumble review up earlier. It has been one hectic, hellish type of week for me. And, you know, even when you go back to Sunday and just the whole vibe of the day after the big news had dropped, you just, you know, it was like a, a, a world of disbelief. Like, really? That, this just happened? So it was, if anything, a, a good reminder of the value that wrestling can at times provide to my life. Like as disenchanted as I can be with a lot of what professional wrestling does and is about today, it also must be said that wrestling has brought a lot of good to my life. A lot of good things have happened directly as a result of my involvement as a fan over 30 years with professional wrestling. So it was nice come Sunday night to be able to say, hey, I'm going to have a few hours of a escape, release. I'm going to get to watch the Royal Rumble. And looking ahead to it, there wasn't a ton of reason for me to get excited about the show beforehand. If anything, just needing a release for a few hours and escape from some things made me look forward more to the Royal Rumble than anything that actually happened to build up to the show. I mean, as far as the show itself, it was some really good and quite a bit of really bad. Like, for example, the Falls Count Anywhere match between Roman Reigns and Baron Corbin. Number one, if you're there at Minute Maid Park in Houston, why aren't you doing some type of spots involving banging trash cans? Just saying, just saying, just saying. But, you know, I understand you're in a big, huge venue, you know, and the optics of that look really good. It makes it feel like an even more big league type of show. That makes sense. If doing Falls Count anywhere, though, does, does that really make sense? And to me, this is an example of a program that needed one more match just to end it versus a program and a story that was entertaining enough and interesting enough where you really needed a big type of blow-off match like a Falls Count Anywhere with Roman and Baron Corbin. You knew you were going to get some shenanigans, some chicanery. You were going to get, you know, freaking Bobby Roode and <laughs> Dolph Ziggler involved. You were going to get the Usos involved. The positive of this is Roman winning means you move on from this. Good. If that's what it means, good. Thought it was a big miss, though. You do the porta potty spot and Baron Corbin doesn't come out with any blue on it. What the hell was that about? Like, it was just weird. Just little things like that. Um, but then you get to the Women's Royal Rumble. And the first half of the Royal Rumble, I thought, was really good. In particular, Bianca Belair was outstanding. She had a big star-making type of performance. And as I'm going through the first half of that rumble, like everything is rolling, I'm saying, man, this is going to be a really good rumble match. And then here comes Charlotte Flair. And it all went downhill. You do all that building up for Bianca Belair just so that way you could dismiss her real quick, like, because we got to get potato salad, mayonnaise, Charlotte Flair, all the shine in the spotlight here. I mean, seriously. This company just loves their mayonnaise, don't they? On a variety of different levels. Their flavorless potato salad. I mean, here's what I don't understand. Like, you get down to the final two, and it's Shayna Baszler and it's Charlotte. And instead of trying to, you know, better establish somebody, you decide to force the woman that you forced so many times already to minimal results. 
for reasons that are unbeknownst to me other than ne nepotism, laziness, and sheer stupidity. And what I really don't understand about this, besides just trying to ask what exactly is the appeal of Charlotte Flair, is there are so many people that rage against Roman Reigns and everything that Roman Reigns represents. And yet it is Charlotte Flair who is infinitely more pounded down people's throats than Roman Reigns is, and yet those same people that clown on Roman Reigns love and adore Charlotte Flair for reasons I do not know. No personality, no charisma. What, what's her character? Seriously. Bunch of botchy bitch move matches? Like, she's terrible. Dude looking with her messed up plastic surgery overdoing itself. But Roman's the one that's forced, and Roman's the one that's overpushed to the moon to the nth degree. How do you figure? Like, and even her winning this, you can just hear the dejection in the crowd, like, oh, great, here we go again. And that's exactly it. You know, you take all the shine of the first half of the match where you had some good performances, maybe not uh, Beth Phoenix hitting her head on the frickin' ring posting and busted open and the blood going all through her hair, but you just, you had, it was a tale of two rumble matches before Charlotte got in there and afterwards. And even like the stuff they were doing with Naomi, and it was really good to see her back. It was phenomenal, as a matter of fact. Natural hair, don't care. Woo! But, bah, 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 bah. like the long build up to the freaking spot of hers, like once you started doing it, then you go away from it. And it's like, it out this usefulness after a long period of time. It really did. And just for her to be dismissed quickly, so that way we can get back to mayonnaise and potato salads. No paprika! Not even a little bit! Ugh, it's horrible. Hated the second half of that women's rumble match. Hated it. It was just bad. Uh, speaking of bad, it continued with that SmackDown Women's Championship match. Lacey Evans and Bailey. Like, there's nobody to cheer for. You could easily hate both of them. Like, there is no appeal here to this match, and especially the match itself was not good. Like, a lot of people probably agree this very possibly was the real clunker of the night. It was bad and mercifully, it eventually ended, and that's about all you need to know about that. The surprise for me was the Universal Title Strat match, Daniel Bryan and The Fiend. They didn't have the red light on this time, thank the Lord. I'm always a fan of trying things and doing things that are different, but you also got to recognize when maybe it's not effective or maybe it doesn't work. They could maybe incorporate it at certain spots, but having the whole match like, man, man it would hurt my eyes. And I'm already a twitchy type of eye glitchy mother effer anyways. It just made my stuff even worse. Uh, but this match, with two guys that have really good chemistry with each other, two guys that actually have a decent story heading into this match, they put on a really good performance. This was a really good match. So it was at least a middle baseline type of strap match. Certainly one of the best matches we've seen for The Fiend. Um, I enjoyed this one quite a bit. It helped kind of cleanse the palate from that finish of the Women's Royal Rumble match and that SmackDown Women's Championship. Like, this at least felt like it was a world title match that was worthy of a big four pay-per-view. So I'll take it. Uh, the Raw Women's Championship, Asuka and Becky Lynch. You know, speaking of forces with Becky Lynch. I don't know. This match was certainly better than Lacey Evans and Bailey, that's for sure. Um, but I, again, it, it comes down to like people could do all the matches and the moves in the matches in the freaking world, and it doesn't matter to me. If I don't care about the performers, if I don't care about the participants, if I don't care about the backstory, if I don't care about any of that stuff, it is really, really hard for me to get engaged in the match. I'm not one of these more modern fans that do not care about any of that crap that actually makes wrestling really good. Just move marks. That's all they are now. Oh, they had a great match. What the hell does that even mean? Everybody flips and bumps around now. That means nothing. And it means nothing. But this was a good match in terms of the optics of it. Again, just no emotional investment at all. So it's hard to say that I really cared all that much. But at this point in time, I was just ready for 
the end of the night. Let's get to the main event. Let's get to this men's Royal Rumble. How are they going to do this with Brock Lesnar coming in at number one? And you know what? It probably wasn't that surprising that they served up a big, long line of jobbers. Why'd they have to start off with Elias? Jomo, like... I got to listen to 10 seconds! This is not supposed to be about Tony and making Tony happy, Vince. This is supposed to be about me and me and you trolling Tony, Vince. He needed... More Jumbo! Not enough Jumbo equals very homo. And I do not mean that in a disrespectful way. Poor. We bring back MVP. It was cool to see MVP. It's like it was cool to see Mighty Holly in the Women's Royal Rumble match. We got MVP dressed like T'Challa. Wakanda forever. Just for him to immediately get thrown out by Brock Lesnar. Come on, man! You got the first real big, big moment, though, is when you had Keith Lee come out at number 13. What well, was it? Braun Strowman came out at number 14. And you had the big boys out there. Just so that way Brock Lesnar could eliminate both of them. The deuce is that! And, you know, eventually... The domination to Brock Lesnar in the Rumble ended when Drew McIntyre eliminated him to a massive ovation. Like, if that was your plan, was to build up Brock Lesnar in the Rumble by having him eliminate a bunch of meaningless people, so that way somebody that you did want to get behind and Drew McIntyre could come out and eliminate him and the crowd would really pop, then it was mission accomplished. Unfortunately... Once that happened, you still had quite a bit of Royal Rumble left. But obviously, in the early 20s, what was it, 21? I think it was 21. If I'm off on the number, please forgive me. I'm old. It's Edge. All those know-it-alls and wise-asses that tried to talk crap about the reports that Edge was going to be back and the fans that wanted to believe that Edge was going to be back and were saying he was going to be back. Oh, he's not back. You don't know what he's talking about. Well, screw you. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Because there was Edge, 46 years old, actually with a flat stomach. What's your excuse, Jericho? And he's back in the WWE. He's working in the Royal Rumble, spearing the hell out of people. Like, when his music hit, I mean, that was a legit pop. Like, I'm a pop mark in wrestling as much as there is anything else. And hearing that pop for Edge was phenomenal. Like, that was a moment. All those years of being away and not being an active in-ring competitor. And at a time when a company could use whatever the heck they can get their hands on, to be able to bring back somebody like Edge, who was never truly a top, 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 top guy, but a somewhat top guy, part of that fortunate four, one of those really reliable hands, you know, Certainly is a welcome addition to me. The teasing of rated RKO for a little while. That's right. It's about ego, baby. <laughs> but it all didn't matter. It was going to come down to the final two after Edge got out of there. It was Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns. It was very interesting as the day went along on Sunday. And the odds for the Royal Rumble winner dramatically shifted in Drew McIntyre's favor. I'm like, is that, is that true? Are these just bad reports? Are they just trying to spin people? Are they really going to go with the chosen one as the Royal Rumble champ over a decade after he probably should have been the Royal Rumble champ? And they did it. He last eliminated Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre, won the Royal Rumble, and he's going out to get a title shot at WrestleMania. And you have to forgive me for a second because this was a freaking surprise and a half. The same guy that a few years ago was a part of 3MB. The same guy that, if I remember correctly, just recently was jobbing out to Roman Reigns. All of a sudden, now, we've turned an immediate corner with him, looked at him, and said, you know what? We want to make a WrestleMania World Championship match guy out of him. Just like that. Where the hell did this come from? Like, to me, the best and most effective Royal Rumble winners are either 
established stars where storyline-wise it makes sense for them to win it, or the individuals that you have spent an extensive period of time building up and giving them increasingly more important matches and victories at significant signature pay-per-views, like an Austin type of build-up, a Rock type of build-up, you know, a Warrior type of build-up going back in the day, and Drew didn't get any of that. Like, this to me was a legitimate surprise. Like, I even asked on Twitter, why is everybody talking about Drew McIntyre winning the Royal Rumble? Now, part of that could be because I don't watch Raw every week, hardly at all. I, I could be part of it, so I was out of the loop. But this was a legitimate surprise. I don't know if it was a good surprise or a bad surprise. It was a surprise. Even though people were talking about it was going to happen and the betting odds suggested it was going to happen, it still, ironically enough, when it happened, surprised me a little bit, especially since the golden boy, Roman Reigns, the one that a lot of you claim is forced down your throat as you wear your freaking Charlotte Flair wagon. What the hell? What the hell? I, I, I was legit surprised. But I really actually enjoyed this men's Royal Rumble match. It was worth the wait to me. You had some big notable appearances. You know, MVP returns and then obviously Edge. You know, <laughs> I don't know if it measures up to Santina appearing in the women's Royal Rumble. <laughs> but, oh God. Woo, Santina. Um, <laughs> But, but it worked with Brock Lesnar at number one. I mean, did we really think he was going to go all the way to number 30? Hell no. He was winded after three minutes. He was, he was gassed. <laughs> he was blown up. But it worked. It was like, you had the first half of the Rumble. Then once Drew eliminated Brock, then the rest of the Rumble happened. But whereas you had a tale of two Rumble matches where it was dominated by Bianca Belair and then Charlotte Flair came in and ruined everything, and this one, you have Brock Lesnar dominate early, Drew McIntyre eliminates Brock Lesnar, and then you still have a whole other half of the match that actually worked really well for me. So I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, the show itself, like I said, if nothing else, it was a nice escape for the realities of life and death for a few hours on Sunday night. Uh, the show was not overwhelmingly awesome. I got two matches that I really, really enjoyed. That strap match was good. The men's rumble match, the main event was very good. And the rest of it I could pretty much do without. And it's that simple.